Hey, CFM, how you guys doing? Pastor Sam here, and uh, right next to me is the man, Jonah Hernandez, and uh, <laughs> he's representing New York uh, today, and uh, <laughs> anyway, hey, we're, um, we're just catching up via Zoom, you know, we just can't get enough of Zoom, but um, we are, what we're doing, what we're bringing to you is our first CYA recap and so this is uh, a message recap from this past friday we just started this uh, series we're in called tell me something good and it's about the gospel and we kicked it off with a message called no good news until you know the bad news and uh you know every time that we gather uh when we would gather on cya nights you know we we love to say this phrase that uh, you know, is what we really believe. But when we gather, we don't just gather to engage with the stage, but we're here to engage with each other. And uh, we always love giving opportunity to have conversation around uh, the content of the night, around the, the message, and just let that take us into some conversation um, and, and see where that goes. And so uh, we like to process these things together conversationally. And so uh, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what we're going to be doing through this series. But uh, I'm leading it off with my friend and fellow uh, CYA member, uh, Jonah. And so, Jonah, say what's up. What's up, everyone? Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, Pastor Sam. Uh, I get, I'm not too awkward, I guess, in my, like, small group Zoom meetings, but I think knowing that this is going to be hosted, I, I tend to kind of, my nerves get a little bit <laughs> amplified. <laughs> It's all good, man. Yeah, just be you, bro. But uh, I think I think that's completely normal. So, uh, but I, I appreciate Jonah. I love his heart, um, and he, you know, like myself and like you, you know, we're all just really uh, people who have been compelled to follow Jesus because we've heard the message of the gospel, and it's gotten a hold of us. And mm -hmm. you know probably at that point we didn't really understand so much about what we were believing into and all that but we were spending the rest of our our life you know discovering what it is that we have uh believed into and what what this is really about because i think the more that we just meditate on the gospel and and what in fact god has done and what jesus has done uh the more it just i think just grips us and, and just compels us to even live uh more of our lives just for this great and amazing god who loves us so much that he would give himself for us you know that he would come for us and that he would uh you know do everything that he's done through the message of the cross which is what we were talking about this past friday and so jonah um i'm gonna ask you you know like i said after CYA messages, we, we say things like at, at the tables, you know, what stood out to you, kind of what, what gripped you tonight, um, whatever, you know, so I'm gonna throw that to you, man. What was it about this past Friday message? Uh, what, what jumped out to you? What, what were you thinking on? Um, so, so the things that immediately stood out to me um, were kind of at the forefront of the message. So that was really good because um, it kept me engaged throughout. But the first thing was this understanding about like, you know, to understand the gospel, you, you tend to have to break it into pieces. And one of the first pieces of that uh, is the concept of sin. Like, What is sin? How did it come into existence? Um, how does it affect us? And, you know, what are the effects of sin affecting us? Um, and that kind of sets the stage for what the gospel is. And a lot of times I've, I'm, and again, this is not to point fingers or to, and to do anything of the sort, but a lot of times um, when I've heard the gospel, um, there has been a tendency to maybe not even, you know, articulate the idea of sin, or if they do, they kind of glance over it, like if it's not a big deal. But when we look at the grand scheme of the gospel and, and Christ's intent in coming to earth, um, that's essentially the, the keystone there. Um, he came to earth to redeem us from our sins so that we would no longer be separated from God and, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera, have eternal life and all of these other great things. Um, and to understand why we, Jesus needed to come, why we needed a savior. We needed to know that we needed to be saved 
Um, and if that's not always articulated, you know, some people will be like, you know, my life is great. Uh, why do I need Jesus? Um, nothing's wrong in my life um, and so on and so forth. So until they know that, you know, and we say this in a, in a gentle way, in a kind way, and more than anything with a loving heart, knowing that we're telling you this because we know the consequences of sin. But unless you're told that you're a sinner in need of a savior, you're lost, you know? If yeah. I believe what I believe with all my heart, um, then I also believe I needed to be saved and everyone else does as well that doesn't know Jesus. So that was one of the first things that kind of like really gripped me and then kept me going. Yeah, no, that's really good. And yeah, I think that, you know, as me and Nicole were considering kind of how to kick off, uh, you know, this whole series and stuff, like, I think that that's the thing that for us, we were thinking about too, is just how it's like, you know, the gospel is good news. Like, you know, the, the term itself in the original language and all that, like, it means like a good you know, message, like it's, it's good news. It's, it's really like a message of salvation. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, so yes, there, there's this awesome, you know, side of just like, it's good news, but it's just the reality of the fact that good news is always breaking into bad news, you know, like a bad situation. It's like, yeah, you don't really, you know, realize the need for uh, this good news until you realize the, you know, reality of the the situation i think so for us it was kind of like doing the best we could with the time we had to paint a picture that helps us to get to why the good news is so good and uh mm -hmm. we were using that passage in or that verse in first corinthians you know 118 where paul says for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to us who are being saved it is the power of god for the yeah. for the greek roman mindset the cross is foolishness because why would a God ever go through that? You know what I mean? Why would a God ever allow themselves to go through that? But also like for the Jewish mind, it's like, okay, you're claiming that Jesus is the one we've been waiting for, that he's the, the Jewish Messiah and all this. And it's like, he's supposed to be like a conquering king, you know, like he's not supposed to beat Rome and all that. He's, he's not, not supposed to die at the hands of Roman soldiers. Like, it was offensive and foolish to them. Like it didn't make sense that God, why God would do it this way. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's the foolishness in, in that day and age and that context. And, and still, I think we, we think of it that way too. But I think in our day, one of the foolishness pieces could be the sin piece. And that's something we brought up was how it's just like, I think more so today people are like, it's, it's the side of just even, believing in sin you know even mm -hmm. believing that sin is is a real thing a real issue that that we really need to be you know rescued from it's mm -hmm. kind of more like learning how to um more accept it you know and we almost think like god would think like us like he would just yeah uh like why, why can't he learn to accept it as well you know like kind of attitude rather than why does why does sin have to be truly dealt with? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, like, what do you think of when it comes to, like, the way people think about sin today? You kind of started to get into that a little bit. Yeah, so so the idea of sin, I would say, in popular culture, um, whether in the sphere of, like, you know, academia or, you know, as seen on TV and things of that sort, sin is kind of seen as, like, a lighthearted thing. Um and I think you guys did a really good job in the message of explaining this, but it's like, I, I think uh, we can tend to see sin as just like little itty bitty like stains on a shirt or something. And it's like, it's no big deal. Um, it, no one's going to notice it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Until it's like, oh, someone murdered somebody. Then everybody's up in arms, you know, because then it's a serious offense. Um, but we also, and, and like I said, you guys did a good job of articulating this. In understanding the gospel, we also need to understand who God is and that he is just and that he is holy. Um, and if you don't understand that, again, you're going to see sin as kind of like, a, oh, I told a white lie or something to that degree. Um, but when you understand that God is holy and he is just and he is not like us, uh, his ways are, are not our ways, you know, the, his thoughts are not our thoughts. He's so far above us. Then we start to get an understanding, okay, like there's a difference between us. And what's, what's separating me from him? Oh, it's sin. 
and like the Bible articulates that and so on. And it's like, when we know that something like sin, though we may in our, our, our mind societally today view it as like a small thing, when you understand the gap that it separates us from, uh, or the gap that it creates in, in separating us from God, and the fact that Jesus had to come to do away with all sin, you know, take our sins and punishment upon himself, then you start to really understand and grasp it, the severity of it, you know, whether small or big in our eyes, you know, we tend to develop a hierarchy of sin, like this is worse than this and la la la. Um, but truly all sin is seen in the same light uh, according to God and all sin is, you know, against him and separates us from him. So societally, I feel like we have a leniency and you said it best, you know, we think, oh, why doesn't God just learn to live with it? Or like, God's just like us, like, oh, just deal with it, man. It's no big deal. But truly, like, if we can, if we are to believe that God is holy, then he can't be like us. And if he can't be like us, then that means, you know, um, what are those attributes? You guys mentioned love and just, and if he's just, he can't allow, you know, you know, our sin that goes directly against him and separates us from him to go, you know, um, unjudged or, you know, without punishment. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we've asked you guys to uh, send in different comments, things that, that arose as you were listening to the message and all that. And we actually had uh, someone send us an email and, and let us know uh, a couple things that, that jumped out to them, but I'm a, I'm going to read real quick um, what was sent in. And this is from, I'll use your first name only. This is from Joel. Thanks, Joel, for reaching out. It says this, around 16 minutes in, that's so precise, around 16 minutes, uh, Nicole mentioned a really good point, which is that someone who doesn't understand the bad news would, of course, think the good news is foolish. I constantly think about how much our generation in particular declines to make a choice about religion, instead deciding that it's just not applicable. The Bible doesn't say that only people who reject the good news outright will die. It says that anything someone does that is short of fully accepting the good news still leads to eternal death. So many people miss the mark because they justify to themselves that they can treat God's reality as a choice or postpone the decision or think that it's a lifestyle for religious people only. It is really a matter of truth and reality which exists whether we as individuals choose to face the decision and evaluate it for ourselves or not. That's a pretty cool comment. Like, a, yeah, a really I really love like, it. Like, way to, to, you know, just kind of synthesize some thoughts there. But, uh, yeah, what do, you, what do you think of what, what Joel is saying there, Jonah? So, for me, I would have to obviously agree um, that today in our culture, there tends to be a, a disposition where it's like, Religion was once necessary, um, but we're mm -hmm. past that. We don't really need it anymore. Um, and again, in in light of the gospel, um, we have this, they, there's a, a huge fallacy in their way of thinking because, you know, they start to think of things um, as, like, like basically taking themselves out of context historically and saying, oh, you know, religion was for that time and that's when they needed it. But if we only knew how crucial religion and, you know, faith is to living proper and good lives. I mean, if we look historically, like some of the first churches and orphanages, or sorry, some of the first hospitals and orphanages were um, established by Christians and Protestants. Um, and it's like, not only is there like this practical essence to it, like those who believe the gospel, um, you know, they produce all of these beautiful things in light of the gospel and in light of scripture that we're told to do. Um, but then we, we can also take it a lot more um, morally. So um, I kind of spoke to this, or I'm not sure if I did, but this idea where it's like, we'll wait. <laughs> Uh, um, so with that, it's like, that's the mentality a lot of people hold. So when you don't understand the gospel, the fact that, um, you know, sin is a thing, it is a thing that affects us. And I would say we can kind of look to the consequences of sin in civilization today, throughout all cultures and history. Um, but people don't really want to acknowledge that. So they just, they attribute it to uh, X, Y, or Z. And then they're like, but if we fix those things, we're good so we again we don't need religion so they find loopholes and 
like this person said, justification for not coming to faith. Um, but all in all, that comes from just a, a standpoint of pride that this generation is somehow the perfect human or that we have finally met, um, you know, our peak and we're only going higher, like, you know, and yeah. if we look at it again, the last hundred years were the bloodiest in all of human history, and we don't know what's in store for the next hundred, truly. Yeah. And if we don't look to scripture, if we don't believe unto the gospel, we're never going to have a right understanding of humans. We're never going to have a right understanding of yeah. um, what makes us tick and why we are so weak and why do we do the things that we do. Yep. Um, and again, biblically, we also have to stand upon the truth that even if you've never, or like, even if you justify not believing the gospel, um, you're still held to that same standard as all humanity is. And that's why, you know, hopefully as Christians, we're inclined and we are obeyed to, but hopefully, sincerely, we feel the inclination to spread the gospel so that yep. those people may not be, you know, lost, but saved and you know, they can use their intellect in rationalizing um, an argument against the gospel for hopefully one that is for the gospel to hopefully um, affect the intellectual aspect of other individuals and convince them and bring them to hopefully a saving grace. Yeah. I love what Joel says here with this whole, uh, you kind of brought it up where they, many people miss the mark because they justify to themselves that they can treat God's reality as a choice or postpone the decision, or think that it's a lifestyle for religious people only. Uh, it is really a matter of truth and reality. And mm -hmm. like, I love that uh, he says that because I I remember even for myself, like something that I had to uh, come to, because I think there's even a lot of reasons why people even come to Jesus, you know? And some people come to Jesus not because he's the truth and this is reality, but some people come to Jesus because they're in a bind or they're in like a really difficult spot and they're just like they're looking for for real help you know and it's like yeah absolutely i i i think that is a lot of our stories you know is that we kind of get brought to these places man mm -hmm. man that's i think like the grace of god just meets us there but you do have to really kind of come to a place to where you realize that the reason to fully put my trust here and the reason to fully you know, uh, give my life to Christ and follow him is not just because, oh, this is my way that, you know, has kind of helped me to come out from that dark place or to come out from, you know, what I once was dealing with, struggling with whatever. But it's like, no, it's because he's the truth. It's because, you know, he's the way, the truth, the life. And it's like, until that's the reason why we like believe what we believe, I think you're always going to have, you know, a bit of struggle, you know, within, mm -hmm. within your, your relationship with God, within your walk with him, because um, there is this side to where it's like, that is the, the, the real like sure foundation for like beginning your relationship with God and following him is like settling that fact that it's like, man, you're the truth this is the truth. This is the reality. This is the real way it, that things are, you know, it's not just, this is another option and, you know, a sea of, of different solutions and different options that exist, but no, this is what's really going on. You know, this is what is really just, this is what the human condition's about. This is what the real, you know, answer to our need is. And, and this is, this is the truth, you know, so mm -hmm. I like that he, that he brings that up. I think that that is something that's offensive to people, but the gospel is offensive, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and a lot of people, like we've been saying, see this as foolish, but just because it's deemed as foolish and it's even offensive um, to our modern sensibilities doesn't mean that it's not true. And I, I've mm -hmm. thought about that, how it's like, you know, just because people feel a certain way about what, we believe and proclaim it doesn't mean that it's not true <laughs> you know and like that's something that we have to anchor and it's like you might yeah. not like this you might everything in you might be repulsed by this doesn't mean it's not true you know what i mean just like if i got a bad report from the doctor i might be like 
no, like nothing in me wants to receive that. I reject that, but it doesn't mean that it's not true. You know what I mean? And it's just like when we, you know, tell uh, the world essentially, or even just people in our world that it's like, hey, this is the reality of the human condition. Just because we don't like to hear it doesn't mean it's not the truth. And, you know, mm-hmm. just because Jesus is the solution and they would rather, you know, the solution be something else doesn't mean it's not the truth. So, I mean, with this, with this whole kind of topic, I think that it is, it's one that is a conversation that it's not always like the, the fun conversation to have Mm -hmm. with people, you know, with others. And so it's like, what do you, how do you, Jonah, how do you navigate talking about the reality of sin and all that, you know, with, with people in your world that, you know, don't, believe what you believe and and all that maybe have some questions gotcha yeah so so i think that's definitely a tricky subject um i've been doing my best um like these past couple of months to like get up on game when it comes to apologetics and things like that um you know in defenses of the faith of the faith because um obviously i'm not necessarily defending my faith but sometimes they'll drop a little nuggets that are very practical and you can kind of like address um, in conversation with people and and so on and so forth. But um, for me, when it comes to, you know, addressing the concept of sin, um, first and foremost, um, I address it in myself. So I do my best to live in a Christ-like manner in the presence of all people. Though I myself fall short of that mark, just like everyone else, I hold myself to a standard, not just when I'm in church or, you know, um, when I'm with uh, my family or Christian friends, but in all circles, because if I am to advocate this concept of sin, then that concept of sin also, you know, um, affects me. And I'm a hypocrite if I don't play that game or I don't play by those rules when I'm around people that don't believe that either. Cause then it's like, how true do I even believe that? Um, or how firm do I hold that belief? So that's my first thing, just living in a Christ-like manner, walking um, in, in gentleness and kindness and softness. Um, I myself um, tend to be a passionate person. So that's not always the easiest. So it's something I'm working on, but it's definitely my first like line of defense, so to speak. Um, and then after that, uh, it tends to get a little bit more academic. So that's why I kind of mentioned apologetics as well, because we get into concepts of philosophy and more moralism and morality and all of these things. And it's like, it, it's not so much about convincing people um, that they're wrong, I guess, but it's also like almost trying to convince them of like that there is such a thing as a moral law. And if there's a moral law that's outside of humans, then there has to be someone who gives that law. So it starts to go full circle between I, you know, do my best to not sin because there's someone who's telling me not to. And that goes into like, oh, I believe in a God. So I'm able to like kind of work conversations where let's say somebody asks me, oh, why don't you do X, Y, or Z, right? And I'm like, okay, well, it's because, you know, the Bible tells me this and blah, blah, blah. Um, And then I get into this idea of like, God has given us the Bible and I believe that it is inerrant, you know, without like um, mistake and so on and so forth. And it is his inspired word. And I hold that word precious and I obey it because God is the one giving it. So similar to what we're mentioning, it goes from a back and forth between how I conduct myself and also kind of evangelizing at the same time. So I I know I'm going on a whole rant, but I'll, I'll keep it very short. Um, I was talking to a friend um, this past weekend, I think, Um, and basically we got into a whole conversation about this. Um, I haven't talked to him much in the past couple of months because of the whole like COVID situation, Um, but basically we met up, we got some food, um, and we just caught up, and basically he saw by the way I was living my life, oh, I'm serious about this Jesus stuff, because he also was a friend that I've had where I wasn't living in a Christ-like manner. And now that I claim these things and I live in such a way, he can see the fruits of that, you know, that Christ is something uh, that is real or that is indeed working in me and so on. 
so then we talk about sin he's like so is it like rules or is it like this or is it like that and it's it starts you you have to start articulating yourself in a way where it's like it's not legalism it's not like if you don't follow these rules you're going to hell that's why we talk about sin in like the gospel no it's about understanding that sin is a thing but christ is also something that redeems us from sin so rather and I, I get why this conversation can be uncomfortable, but I think that's why, so to, to fast forward, basically I refined and gave him an accurate depiction of who Jesus was and what faith as a Christian is. Um, and in that, he was able to also acknowledge that sin is a thing, but that because of Christ, we no longer suffer the repercussions. We don't have to live in fear and all of these things. So it's like providing similar to the way you guys did it on the YouTube video, you know? Um, okay, so this is sin, but then here's Jesus. Right. So you have to provide both for people to kind of be like, oh, okay, because then they start to freak out. And that's why, you know, when people evangelize on the street, they're attacked a lot because people hear sin and they're like, you're telling me I'm going to hell or this or this or that. And they don't really give the other person to an opportunity to say, oh, no, no, I mentioned that, but like Jesus is the answer for that. Um, and, you know, it becomes a whole thing. But I, I think the beauty in all of this um, is that as people who are endeavoring to share the gospel, though it may be difficult, um, we also believe the fact that the Holy Spirit goes before us. Um, that's why when I hang out with people, um, I, again, I mentioned it earlier, rely on the Holy Spirit and discernment. And I didn't mention this, but prayer. Um, hopefully when, you, when we go out and share the gospel, whether it's in like an evangelistic kind of like methodology, like you're passing out tracks or something, or maybe it's a close friend that isn't a believer. Um, we present the gospel in, in a correct manner, in a well-meaning manner, um, and, and rely on the Holy Spirit to soften people's hearts. Because all we're called to do is plant seeds, um, and, you know, some will sow. Um, and that, that person may not be us. I've heard this, uh, you know, analogy, obviously, in Scripture, but, like, from the pulpit at Cottonwood, they talk about, like, maybe your job is just to plant the seed for someone um, and maybe water it, and then someone else is going to, you know, sow the rewards and all of that, and that, that's all we can do. I think that's one of the encouragements for me these days, especially when presenting the gospel, and everyone, you know, has their own definitions, and yada, yada, um, and so the, the situation I presented beforehand with my friend, um, yes, they understood the concept of sin and Jesus and all of that, but they didn't walk away a believer. Um, they didn't walk away like someone that trusted Jesus and gave their life to him in that moment but it's this idea that all we can do as individuals is sometimes plant the seed um, and hopefully through the work of the Holy Spirit it was received and it'll start to grow along the line and eventually they'll come to repentance and accepting the gospel um, and and I think that's one of the encouraging things for me today again amidst uh, people saying that truth is subjective not objective and you know, your morals are out of date or your, um, you know, what you define as sin is really not sin anymore. Um, look at society. We say it's okay. And to that train of thought of relying on man's wisdom. But it's funny because I was listening to a talk by Ravi Zacharias. He just passed away um, that he did at UCLA in 2013. And he quoted some really important or really interesting things. But basically, there's this long quote he has of, I think it was like an English reporter. Um, and this was from like, uh, this was a take on America in the sixties, but it basically resonated with America today. And basically everything that we believe is contradictory and nothing really fits together. And, you know, there's no cohesiveness, there's no coherence to our logic and all of this. And everyone's just like, Again, me and mine, what I believe is good and what you believe, that's cool. As long as it doesn't affect me or, um, you know, uh, how would I say it? As long as it doesn't disagree with what I believe, even though there's plenty of ways of thinking that do do that, but they make exceptions. But, you know, with Christians, the tendency is they don't. Um, when it comes to Christians, they're like, no, no, no. Everyone we're cool with, but your gospel, because it calls out sin, and it says that there needs to be a humbling of hearts and repentance and all of that and becoming, quote unquote, you know, like a slave to Christ. We don't want that. Um, and with that, you know, again, I look back to scripture and the fact that God's grace is enough 
and the Holy Spirit goes before me in all of my endeavors in presenting yeah. the gospel. And, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's what I hold tight to. Yeah. And I think, you know, you did a good job there of bringing out kind of almost like the bad news, good news side of sharing, you know, mm -hmm. and being people who, you know, live carrying this message, which isn't easy for anybody to hear and receive, especially in our time. And like, it's the fact that it's like, okay, yeah, like there's a lot of things going on in our worldviews and the philosophical kind of ideas that people are, are living by today that make it kind of a message that seems like so hard to mm -hmm. reckon or with. foolish like yeah, or, yeah foolish exactly but it's this side of how it's like but the holy spirit is the one who it, it really is the side of like what you know paul brings up even in the passage again where it's like it's the power of god you know to those who are being saved because it's absolutely like it's the foolishness of the message you know and the fact that it's always going to be looked upon with disdain by you know the world probably because the world's in sin you know but it's going to be something where still even so there's going to be a miraculous side to the way that it's received by people because of the power of god in it you know and at work and the fact that the holy spirit like you said you know that that he's the one who who is at work you know he's at work within people's lives and hearts some of the trains of thought that people begin on you know even before maybe a gospel message gets presented to them like that's that's the holy spirit at work like i know for me i got brought to a place when i was 21 where all of a sudden i just felt like everything that i was living for and everything around me was empty and so i started asking different questions and kind of seeing things in my life that i was really okay with like only months before differently and and I was like put in this place to where it was like being someone who actually had heard the gospel my whole life growing up, but it's like, you know, I was primed and ready now to actually finally bend the knee to it. You know what I mean? Because it was like, I got to this spot where some certain things were going on in my heart and whatever. And then that time at that stage in my life, the gospel being presented to me and it was like, you know, I, as much as I wanted to resist it, I couldn't you know what I mean? And it was the power of God to essentially save me, you know, because I was definitely not ready to be face to face with my creator. Mm -hmm. And I just see how it's like, like what you said, you know, it's just the Holy Spirit goes before us. That's the good news. And if you feel like we feel, you know, I'm not going to pretend like I'm a pastor who doesn't feel that kind of, <laughs> you know, awkwardness and that side of like, man, this is, this is not always like the most, you know, uh <laughs> i'm not always the most motivated to go like mm -hmm. hey cool so like let's talk about the gospel you know like with <laughs> with people that you know I, I need to be and stuff and it's just mm -hmm. like it, it's it is the good news when you just really take in that reality of the power of god in the message itself the power of god at work by the holy spirit you know it is when any of us get saved that is the greatest miracle that there is. It's literally God taking someone out of perishing and putting them into life. You know, it's literally mm -hmm. uh, us coming out of death and coming into life. It's a miraculous thing. It's a resurrection power thing, you know? And mm -hmm. so it's just like, that is the the good news, you know, of just us who, who carry the message of the gospel, you know? And, and I think that like, that's something that, we even need to allow ourselves to kind of be like motivated or, or inspired by and, and kind of fueled by is that side of like, you know, finish, finish the, the verse, you know, don't just go, <laughs> the message of the cross is foolishness, you know, mm -hmm. to those who are perishing, finish the verse, you know, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. And, and maybe just stay there on those last you know, two words there, the power of God, or that's three words, you know, the, just like stay there, you know, um, on the power of God and like, just let that sink in because yeah, man, like there's a whole host of other things that people would much rather pursue because they don't confront sin. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I'll try this kind of way of spirituality or I'll try this kind of way of self-improvement or this kind of way of, um, you know, dealing with my addictions or whatever you know and it's like 
we will, we're, we're willing to try anything else, but the one thing that actually confronts us in our sin and has the actual power to change it, you know, and the actual power mm-hmm. to break it uh, off our lives. So we need to really just be people who anchor into that, to the power of God inherent within the gospel itself, for sure. But yeah, man, um, any, any kind of final thoughts in regards to things that were, were touched on in Friday's message? Um, I think one thing I do want to mention um, that I wasn't able to because of kind of the train of thought we had there yeah, yeah. Um, was the fact, like the, the importance of the cross, you know, the, the fact that Christ did die and that he was resurrected and that he was fully man and fully God, um, and that he took upon himself, you know, like, like I guess more of the detailed-oriented things, because obviously the gospel is beautiful news and great news, but one of the things that helped me understand the gospel and have it really resonate with myself and kind of finally get it like, oh, this is the severity of it, and like, the now I can even be more grateful of it, is like, okay, so Christ was fully man, fully God, you know, he went to the cross. He did indeed die, but he rose again um, in dying for us. It wasn't simply, I, I used to have this, mis- con- I had a contorted view of the, of the cross for a very long time. Like, oh, Jesus paid for our sins because he was beat up, basically. But it's like, no, it's because while he was also, you know, physically harmed, he took upon himself the wrath of God entirely, you know, as the judgment for all of our sins and if yeah. we can kind of picture a God that's able to make the universe, just imagine that wrath yeah. and that he had to be fully man and fully God to be able to, you know, deal with his wrath and still resurrect again. And the power that's in that, that stirred me to start really, you know, even thinking or meditating on the cross when it was an Easter and things like that. It, it, yeah. it, it changed something in me and I think it was just something I wanted to point out for our yeah absolutely that's awesome dude that's beautiful um why don't we do this why don't we pray to close it out and uh Jonah since you're the special guest of honor I'll let you uh <laughs> pray us out all right, um, I just got the little thing that said my network was unstable so hopefully I don't lag in this okay. um but Yeah, Lord, we thank you for bringing us here today, um, having this conversation with one another earnestly um, about the gospel and how beautiful it is um, and how it has the power to save, to to bring dead people to life, um, you know, to restore us to yourself, Lord. And we're just so grateful to have the opportunity and the ability to do this. Um, I know that there are plenty of places around the world that you know, people are getting martyred for doing this. Um, So let us not take this for granted. Let us uh, leave this uh, this Zoom call and, you know, those that are listening, let us step away from this understanding how beautiful the gospel is, what it means for us um, in our salvation, but also how precious it is and how um, encouraged we should be to go and spread it wherever it is that we are or whoever, you know, we are with um, because it has the power to save and you know, in this country, we have the luxury to speak the gospel at this very moment, though we may be faced with um, inconveniences uh, that that means nothing and it stands nothing um, against your power, your strength that abides in us, Lord. So we thank you for these conversations. I hope that they were fruitful and I know that you're doing a work in this and that you made whatever it is that you wanted to send out um, resonate with each and every person that's listening. So Lord, we just thank you. Uh, for blessing this time and your beautiful son Jesus' name we pray these things Lord amen 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 cool thanks brother uh, appreciate you just uh, you know sharing your heart and uh, always always anything I can do for you guys yeah and see if fam to you um, keep sending in you know different questions different comments things that kind of arise uh, in your hearts as you're tuning in to the different, you know, content that we're presenting through the month because uh, we're going to find ways to address those and just make sure that we are meeting you right where you're at. So we love you guys. And uh, yeah, first message recap officially wrapping up. So 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs>